Greetings, welcome back to Black Bear News, where we are discussing uh, the sixth mass extinction of life on Earth, imminent. Um, if there is uh, any power that might be beyond what we have already re unleashed upon the Earth, and we humans have done this thing, um, we are the only ones that can stop it, honestly. Um, and maybe that's, you know, the height of, <laughs> um, the height of vanity to think that, you know, maybe we should, um, that maybe we could do that, I don't know. We should do that if we are, um, we are responsible for the, for the destruction that we have wrought. Um, if we have any <laughs> redemption uh, as a species, as humans individually and collectively, um, responsibility lies with us and that responsibility responsibility says we should do whatever we can to correct the situation. <clears throat> I'm going to link a short clip from a man, Gary Steiner, who's talking about anthropocentrism, AKA speciesism. And um, just an interesting little clip, three minutes long. Think you might enjoy it. Um, there are other clips of him speaking on YouTube as well. You can check those out. I'm going to read an article from Paul Ehrlich, March 22nd. Uh, collapse of civilization is a near certainty within decades. 50 years after the publication of his controversial book, The Population Bomb, biologist. Paul Ehrlich warns overpopulation and overconsumption are driving us over the edge. A shattering collapse of civilization is a near certainty in the next few decades due to humanity's continuing destruction of the natural world that sustains all life on Earth, according to biologist Professor Paul Ehrlich. In May, it will be 50 years since the eminent biologist pub published his most famous and controversial book, The Population Bomb. But Ehrlich remains as outspoken as ever. The world's op, uh, optimum population is less than 2 billion people, 5.6 billion fewer than on the planet today, he argues. And there is an increasing toxification of the entire planet by synthetic chemicals that may be more, more dangerous to people and wildlife than climate change. Ehrlich says an unprecedented redistribution of wealth is needed to end the overconsumption of resources, but the rich who now run the global system that hold the annual world destroyer meetings in Davos are unlikely to let it happen. The population bomb written with his wife Ann Ehrlich in 1968 predicted hundreds of millions of people are going to starve to death in the 1970s, a fate that was avoided by the green revolution in intensive agriculture. Many details and timings of events were wrong, Paul Ehrlich acknowledges today, but he says the book was correct overall. Population growth along with overconsumption per capita is driving civilization over the edge. Billions of people are now hungry or uh, micronutrient malnourished, and climate disruption is killing people. Ehrlich has been at Stanford University since 1959, as also is also president of the Millennium Alliance for Humanity in the Biosphere, which works to reduce the threat of shattering collapse of, of a shattering collapse of civilization. It is a near certainty in the next few decades, and the risk is increasing continually as long as perpetual growth of the human enterprise remains the goal of economic and political systems, he says. As I've said many times, perpetual growth is the creed of the cancer cell. It is a combination of high population and high consumption by the rich that is destroying the natural world, he says. Research 
published by Ehrlich and colleagues in 2017 concluded that this is driving a sixth mass extinction, sixth mass extinction of biodiversity upon which civilization depends for clean air, water, and food. The solutions are tough, he says, to start, make modern contraception and back up abortion available to all and give women full equal rights, pay, and opportunities with men. I hope that would lead to a low enough total fertility rate that the needed shrinkage of population will follow, but it will take a very long time to humanely reduce total population to a size that is sustainable. He estimates an optimum global population size at roughly 1.5 to 2 billion. The longer humanity pursues business as usual, the smaller the sustainable society is likely to prove to be. We're continuously harvesting the low-hanging fruit, for example, by driving fisheries stocks to extinction. Ehrlich is also concerned about the chemical pollution, which has already reached the most remote corners of the globe. The evidence we have is that toxics reduce the intelligence of children and members of the first heavily influenced generation are now adults. He treats this risk with characteristic dark humor. The first empirical evidence we, uh, we are dumbing down homo sapiens were the Republican debates in the U.S. 2016 presidential elections and the resultant cacistocracy. Cacistocracy means um, a government run by the very worst pe people. On the other hand, toxification may solve the population problem since sperm counts are plunging. Reflecting five decades uh, after the publication of the population bomb, which he wanted to be titled Population Resources and Environment, he says, no scientist would hold exactly the same views after a half century of further experience, but Ann and I are still proud of our book. It helped start a worldwide debate on the impact of rising population that continues today, he says. The book's strength, Ehrlich says, is that it was short, direct, and basically correct. Its weaknesses were not enough on overconsumption and equity issues. It needed more on women's rights and explicit countering of racism, which I've spent much of my career in act activism trying to counter. Too many rich people in the world is a major threat to the human future and cultural and genetic diversity are great human resources. Accusations that the book lent support to racist attitudes to population control still hurt today, Ehrlich says. Having been a co-inventor of the sit-in to desegregate restaurants in Lawrence, Kansas in the 1950s, and having published books and articles on the biological ridiculousness of racism, those accusations continue to annoy me. But, he says, you can't let the possibility that ignorant people will interpret, it, interpret your ideas as racist keep you from discussing critical issues honestly. Paul Ehrlich weighing in on the sixth mass extinction. I'm going to read one more article. I thought this was quite interesting. MIT Technology Review. January 22nd, 2018. We're about to kill a massive accidental experiment in reducing global warming. A forthcoming UN regulation will slash shipping industry pollution, but may also speed up climate change. Studies have found that ships have a net cooling effect on the planet, despite belching out nearly a billion, billion tons of carbon dioxide each year. That's almost entirely because they also emit sulfur, which can scatter sunlight in the atmosphere and form or thicken clouds that reflect it away. In effect, the shipping industry has been carrying out an, an unintentional experiment in climate engineering for more than a century. Global mean temperatures could be as much as 0.25 C lower than they would otherwise have been based on the mean forcing effect calculated by a 2009 study that pulled together other findings. See the growing case for geoengineering. For a world struggling to keep temperatures from rising more than 2C, that's a big helping hand. We're about to take it away. In 2016, the UN's International Maritime Organization announced that by 2020, international shipping vessels will have to be significantly will have to significantly cut sulfur pollution. Specifically, ship owners must must switch to fuels with no more than 0.5% sulfur content. 
down from the current 3.5% or install exhaust cleaning systems that achieve the same reduction, Shell noted in a brochure for customers. There are very good reasons to cut sulfur. It contributes to both ozone depletion and acid rain, and it can cause or exacerbate respiratory problems. But as a 2009 paper in Environmental Science and Technology noted, limiting sulfur emissions is a double-edged sword. Given these reductions, shipping will, relative to present-day impacts, impart a double warming effect, one from, one from carbon dioxide and one from the reduction of sulfur dioxide, wrote the authors. Therefore, after some decades, the net climate effect of shipping will shift from cooling to warming. Sulfur pollution from coal burning has a similar effect. Some studies suggest that China's surge in coal consumption over the last decade partly offset the recent global warming trend. Though coal does have a strong net warming effect, it's difficult to estimate how much the new rule could affect temperatures. We don't know enough about cloud physics and the behavior of atmospheric particles, nor how, diligent, <clears throat> now how diligently the shipping industry will comply with the new rule, said Robert Wood, a professor of atmospheric scientists, sciences at the University of Washington. <clears throat> Another wrinkle, wrinkle is the ships emit other particles that can sometimes also stimulate cloud droplets to form, including black carbon, a major component of soot. Removing the sulfur from the fuel could alter the size and quantity of these particles, which could affect clouds as well, says Lynn Russell, a professor of the atmospheric science at, of atmospheric science at the Scripps Institute of Oceanography. So we can't really say exactly what, will change, what the change will be, said Russell. Though she adds that the rule change is likely to produce a warming effect on balance. The upcoming change does not offer a different way of thinking about intentional efforts to cool the climate, known as geoengineering. According to some proponent, pr proponents of research in this area, rather than some radical experiment, deliberate geoengineering could, could instead be seen as a way of continuing to do what we've been doing inadvertently with ships, but in a safer way. Sulfur emissions cool the planet in two ways, directly and indirectly. The direct way is that when sulfur dioxide is further oxidized in the atmosphere, it can form particles that reflect sunlight back into space. This happens in large volcanic eruptions, which can release tens of millions of tons of sulfur dioxide. The indirect way is that sulfur particles can also act as nuclei around which cloud droplets form. Clouds, too, reflect more sunlight. You can see this in satellite images, which show lines of white clouds above the ocean along busy shipping lanes. Geoengineering researchers have explored both processes, but with less toxic particles as potential ways to alter the climate. C, scientists consider brighter clouds to preserve the Great Barrier Reef. For instance, researchers with the Marine Cloud Brightening Project centered at the University of Washington have spent years studying the possibility of spraying tiny salt particles into the sky along coastlines to induce cloud droplets to form. To form. They've spent years studying this possibility. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. The group has spent the last few years attempting to raise several million dollars to build the sort of sprayers that would be needed in the hopes of carrying out small scale field experiments somewhere along the Pacific coastline. Both Russell and Wood said the upcoming rule change could also offer a chance to conduct some basic climate science by observing the interactions between airborne particles and clouds. Those insights could make climate simulations more accurate. How clouds behave is one of the least understood parts of the system, Wood said, as well as informing the debate about whether or how to carry out geoengineering. That all depends on whether scientists can get funding for such research which will require more frequent satellite observations and surface sensors. Ideally, the research should start before the new rule goes into effect to ensure an accurate picture of how things change. We're approaching dangerous thresholds of temperature increases, so an additional bump of 0.1 or 0.2 degrees is something that we as a civilization should be watching really, really closely, says Kelly Wanser, Principal Director with the Marine Cloud Brightening Project. Whether this money will be available is less clear. Certain nations have been increasing funding levels for climate research, but it's become far more difficult to secure grants in the United States under the Trump administration, which specifically sought to cut NASA programs that monitor clouds and airborne particles. Yep, yep, um, it's happening. The discussion of geoengineering is becoming 
just a little louder every day. Um, I mean, I, I just, I find it somewhat unbelievable that they're like, uh, I mean, the, the experiments with spraying, you know, salt in the air or um, sulfur dioxide um, or, or sulfuric acid, like all of these experiments sound extremely rudimentary, right? Um, and I'm sure because there have been um, documents relating to this, that this has been, you know, the military has been experimenting with this stuff for a really long time. So it's just, it's just very hard for me to believe that they're like, oh, you know, the universities are like, I don't know. I don't know if this is going to work. It just seems a little ridiculous because it just, like they're just now like, oh, you know, let's try some salt in the air <laughs> to see if it works. You know, I mean, it says this, this uh, project has been going on for years. It's just taken years and years and years and years and years to figure out what the, you know, what the effect is going to be or what the results are. I don't know. Um, anyways, the conversation will become more mainstream and more uh, prevalent as time goes by and people start saying, what are we going to do about this? global warming about this melting ice um yeah and then people and then we're gonna have votes in congress and then you know people are gonna be like oh my you know uh they're gonna be voting on it on it in congress while you know while some people are still saying but there is no global warming um i'm i'm absolutely positive that will be a scenario that's all i have for this video thank you so much for your eyes your ears your conscience if you would like to support this channel you can do so at the links below until next time peace